Okay, you guys, so it has been over a month since you guys have seen my tanks, and in that time, you have missed pretty much nothing. Yeah, not much has happened. I mean, you guys pretty much remember it all. We built the tank, I added fish, I accidentally released the plague, and it killed most of the fish. I tried to save some fish, uh, and then I left. I did come back for my trip, though. Eventually. And so the question is, what do my tanks look like right now? Not good. But you know, it's like they say in the hobby. It's best to have a clean tank and a good drink. I made that up, nobody says that. Uh, looking at this though, uh, I could already use one. Uh, a strong drink. A very strong drink. Because you see, I didn't just go on one short trip. I actually went on a lot of different little trips over the last month. Like, I went to Vancouver, Canada, which was so green. I went to Chicago in like the sixth tiniest passenger airplane you could possibly imagine. And then I also went to North Carolina, where I actually got to see some really cool coral skeletons. Like, this was so cool. Did you even realize that a pipe organ skeleton looked like this? I had no idea this is what coral skeletons looked like, because uh, I've never killed a single coral in my life. <sighs> Yeah, so anyways, I've not been taking great care of my tanks while I've been gone because uh, I've been gone. I mean, look at, they're green, they're red, white, and blue. Hold up, look, that coral's not dead, okay? Um, it just hasn't seen the sun for a while. It's been winter inside. All this together means that it's time for a paint cleaning day. That's it, that's, that's all we do. We're just, we're, we're cleaning the tanks. So my job today consists of four important tasks. And we're gonna start it off by checking some parameters. So what exactly is a parameter? The definition of a parameter is a numerical or other measurable factor forming one of a set that defines a system or sets of conditions of its operation. Now I'm sure that means something, uh, but to people with saltwater tanks, parameters really just mean this. <laughs> Welcome. So uh, yes, these are all uh, API test kits pretty much. No, they're not the best. Yes, I did spend all my money on a rainbow chalice coral, and so I had no money for Hannah checkers. Okay? No, I don't regret a single thing. Absolutely not. But look, now that I've answered your questions, here's a couple questions that I have right now. What's my tank's alkalinity? Turns out it's pretty much exactly like eight. What are my phosphates? Pretty much like zero. What are my nitrates sitting at here? I'm gonna just say, I think this might be like five, three? Yeah, something like that. And what are the specific values that these should be sitting at? Um. <laughs> No, I'm not, I, I'm not touching that question with a 10-foot pole. Um, but I mean, look, the obvious answer is that they should be sitting at point. Anyway, I decided to add in some alpha reef to raise the alkalinity a little bit because I don't own a doser right now. Um, and I kind of do this daily anyways. But that being said, I probably should have done this after my next task, the water change. So a few of you guys that have been around for a while might remember that this is how I used to make RODI water with my RODI system out of my faucet in my sink. Yeah, it's not supposed to work like that. About a month ago, I kind of discovered something. Check this out. How cool is that? I can just use my shower. It's not even leaking. That's it. Made sure to hit a couple poses here because I'm saving water now, baby. Really, that's saving my landlord money though because they're the ones that pay for my water bill. And this is right about when I discovered that filling this jug up was gonna take forever. So I decided to do the next task in the interim. We'll come check on you in a while. It's time to scrape some algae off the glass. So to scrape algae, you really only need three things, okay? You need an algae scraper, you need scrapable algae, and you need a handsome man. That's me, I'm the handsome man. Oh man, my jaw's hurt from smiling so much. Ugh. I thought it'd be cool to show you this process with like a slow motion montage. Yeah, turns out I imagined it way better in my head. So the rest is just, this is me just doing it at normal speed now. All right, with that, I think we got the front panel done. It looks good. It, please tell me it wasn't blocking that whole thing. No! Time for the Pico tank. <laughs> Haven't scraped yet? Scraped. Haven't scraped, scraped. Look at that difference. I'm joking, I'm joking. We don't need to do this slow-mo again. <laughs> With all that done, it's time to go back to the water change. Time to do a water change. So I'm a big fan of doing a water change last or near last, so that way we can suck up all that algae that we just scraped up into the water column. But speaking of fans, 
stop looking, okay? I ain't giving these puppies away for free. Anyways, given that I was gone for such a long time, I decided to go for a little bit more than my typical 20% water change that I do on a weekly or bi-weekly schedule, and instead did a little bit more. You know, now it's probably also important for me that I mention that I've already finished making new salt water at this point. You know, like that water that I was filtering and definitely didn't forget about in my shower. <laughs> Pro tip, this is why you do it in the shower. Nice and easy. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how to make new salt water because I've done a video on that before, but basically it involves putting salt and water together and then I heat it up so it's the same temperature of the tank and I just fill up all the water that I just sucked out. And the last thing is just to wipe down the outside of the tank to get rid of all the salt residue. This is also when you typically notice you've missed spots. Oh my god, I missed another one there too. Now, with everything pretty much done, we have one last task to take care of, which is to clean all of my super high-tech equipment. So as you can tell, I don't really have any equipment. I've got some rocks. That's about it. But the one piece of equipment that I do have that I need to clean is that filter sock. I do this pretty much like every week. And I'm gonna hit you with a hot take here, actually. I kind of prefer the filter sock over a roller. Now, I know, I know, it's kind of crazy to say, right? But to me, the roller feels like it's just a little bit wasteful, and it's actually super easy for me to clean this filter sock every week. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's pretty nasty. So, uh, I'm gonna take care of this before it starts leaking all over my floor. I'll be right back. The trick to making this so much easier to clean was instead of going with the felt filter sock that came with the tank and that you have to wash in the laundry every week or so, I instead went with this mesh filter sock that filters out the same size particles, but I can clean it in my sink in like a matter of a few seconds. Look, this took a little bit longer because I was trying to use one hand and film with the other, okay? But look, with two hands, man, it's like this in a couple seconds. Look how clean this is now. Well, that one dries. I'm gonna take the one that I cleaned last week and is already dry. Put that one in there. There we go, all done. And now with everything done, I think there's one last thing for us to do. So I don't know if you recognize these fish here, but uh, if you don't, a little reminder, these were the ones that I was able to save from the velvet outbreak. I saved a couple and their quarantine is done today. So we're adding them back to the tank. And this is so exciting to me because now we've got the tank basically back to where I want it and it's clean, which means the last thing to do is just chill out and enjoy it. Cheers guys, good job, well done. That's a good drink.